Okay, guys, rounding down to the end of the Mission Impossible, trying to squeak a few CFM here and there. Now, I actually did two flow tests. First one was I gave our push rod pinch curved wall a little stoning action, and we took a look at what that did to our flows and our swirl and our airspeeds. Very interesting stuff. It was not a winner. In fact, it only had one, two... Three pluses. Okay, so while it's still on the bench, I stuff the port with a paper towel and give it a polish with a sand roll. Now, a pol uh, you know, a sand roll doesn't give a completely polished surface. So this this liquid that you see here is the valve that we used for the last cut which has the very, very low margin. Okay, I expect the new one that I just did to actually flow better than it because it has a higher margin, like I showed in the demo video of me making that valve. Yeah, sorry about that. 22 minutes to make a valve. Everything in my life is like that, guys. Every single thing. Okay? As far as our liquid in this chamber... It's a little more splattery than we had before. Okay, not bad. Nice on the valve. You can see a little bit. Let's take a look at our, our bore. Okay, obviously I didn't squirt as much as I did last time. But it's got a nice, a nice light powdering on the left. We have a little chunkiness. How far around does it go? It goes fairly decent around. Not quite as good as our last one. That was uh, that was a big win. And the only thing different is that push rod pinch. Okay, in the bowl, it looks better than it has been. Notice it's definitely wider now. That would be a good thing. Now, it's kind of interesting because... Let's grab a magic marker and take a look at this. Okay, hopefully you guys can see what I'm trying to show you here. Okay, the magic marker line is hard to see. But yeah, we come real close to our push rod pinch here. This is curved, right? And this curves all the way along this entire wall to the bowl. Now, yeah, it's been extended out about as far as I prob probably could without worrying about casting thickness. But this, this little neck down right here causes very high speed air right at this push rod pinch. So the texture there makes a big difference. And it's kind of funny when you texture, when you texture it, right, it gives it more of a, uh, I know that I know, uh, I know what it is. Oh my goodness. Try that again. I still can't remember the damn word. But it causes a little bit of turbulence, right? It makes little tiny, like, ball bearings with the turbulence that the the stone marks will leave. Now, what that does, right, it gives us a little bit of a barrier here. So what it winds up doing is less air follows this wall, more air follows our straight wall. And I can tell that because... Our air speeds on the floor changed a huge amount. Then I went back and I polished this with the sand roll. And the air speeds went from high side on this side, moved over to this side. Because now the air can stick to that wall better. Okay? So that is actually worth some power. And it's funny because I've stoned push rod pinches before, and I remember one time I got a huge gain, and I'm like, all right, something's going on here. But it was the same type of thing. I did some experimenting, and it wound up getting polished because it's a, it's a high-speed spot. The air is high-speed there. Usually high-speed, you need a polish. Lower speed, rougher. As a rule of thumb, not always. Let's take a look at our, our valve. Our valve looks quite good. Right, very, very light powdering on the valve. We look good in the bowl. 
We look pretty good in the chamber. We look pretty good in the bore. I'm going to say I like this about the best. All right, there was one other that did a little better in the in the chamber and a little better in the bore. But I wasn't happy with the airspeeds as much. This one right now has probably got about the best airspeeds. We'll take a look at them. Okay, number five, final, right? That's the 178 textured. That's what you guys saw last time. This one, I stoned the pinch. Okay, this is the 1.78 with no margin. All right, how'd we do? Plus, minus, 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 equals, plus, plus. It's a loser. Okay, what do you do at that point? Well, actually, let's take a look at the airspeeds and find out why it's a loser. That's what we need to do. This is definitely an aha moment for me. I'm really glad I did this experiment, okay? This is our fifth final airspeeds. Overall, they were pretty good. They weren't as even across the short side as I would have liked. This isn't bad. That's only 19 apart. I'd like it to get a little tighter than that. And we're not bad as far as top to bottom on our pushrod pinch. Now take a look at what happened. Sorry, guys. When we added the texture to our curve, right? It doesn't stick to that wall as well. So what does it do to the whole pinch? It speeds the whole pinch up because there's actually less area for the air to flow around, right? Because we, now we have that little bit of turbulence, those little ball bearings of air on that, on that curved wall side. So we went up, up, up. And we got some, I mean, there's a decent amount of change, right? As far as, as flow, this was 231.4. This was 230.4. Only one CFM difference, but big differences in our speeds, okay? As far as the roof, up and up. 19 apart here, 20 apart here, not bad. Take a look at what happened here. This is really telling. Okay, this went down considerably, up considerably, up considerably. More than I would like to see. Look at our difference from side to side now. Because everything is going straighter now. So we get a lot more airspeed on our straight wall. And our center of the cylinder gets starved. All right. I don't remember going over the swirls. Let's take a quick look at those. Okay, fifth is on the right, sixth is on the left, equals, plus, equals, plus, plus, equals, minus, minus, plus, plus, minus, minus. Overall, they're both fine. They're both good at 600. I really would rather have it a little more steady instead of zeros and then go up and down. I'd rather have like zero, 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 and then start to go up. But remember, our swirl is changing because we have more air going straight now, right? That's why we got a plus here. It's actually completely off the short side at this point, And it took a step back compared to this one, which is kind of interesting. Now, when we go to take a look at our sixth cut, but sand rolled push rod pinch, things change a lot. And that's really interesting to me. Okay, these are easy to compare because they're on the same page. This is stoned pinch. This is sand roll pinched. Now, is it a huge winner here? Not really. Equals, minus, plus, plus, minus, minus, equals, plus, plus, minus, minus. Look at how tight they are, right? Only plus or minus a couple here and there. So it didn't make a huge difference as far as our flow differential. But take a look at what happened to our swirl. Now, we know swirl takes energy. Okay, we understand that. But if we're not losing it as far as flow... Is there more energy in the whole system? It's an interesting question, right? Think about it. 
Now, remember I said I'd like this kind of dead and then pop up? This has actually got a little dead and then a nice progression up. As far as 600, we're both, these are almost identical. But you see these that aren't dead? I think I'm, I think I'm liking this one for this project. Remember, depending upon what DV and Andy do as for that carb, Swirl is definitely going to be important, right? The liquid, how we control the liquid and our swirl is going to make a big difference in how much energy we can get out of the fuel because we, we need a fast burn, okay? We need a fast burn time. And remember, not a great chamber design, open chamber. I talked to DV in the live. I think in order to keep with the spirit of the original project, it needs to stay in open chamber. I hate to say it, but it's true. Okay, let's take a look at what happened with our air speeds. Uh, we just have to go from top to bottom. Let me put this pluses and minuses. Now, this is where you're going to see this changed quite a bit. All right, minus, minus, minus. Look at how much we dropped. The speed here only dropped one, but the top two dropped quite a bit, okay? Because now the air can stick closer to that turn. As far as our roof speed, center of the cylinder stayed exactly the same. But our roof speed on the cylinder wall went up, which is kind of, I said a lot of the air stayed straight. I should have, I should have spoken about this number here. It only did that on the floor. It didn't do that on the roof. Remember, sometimes the port kind of goes sideways, right? You get an increase on, on the bottom right corner and an increase on the top left corner. That's what we got here, okay? This is lower, this is larger. And when we did a little work, this went up and this one went down. So... What we're looking for, we're looking for more even. Which one of these two is even? This is the winner, right? As far as these, I like that these are, these are lower, right? It's using that, that area that we have there more efficiently. And we are a little tight for area because we're kind of be pushing our luck with these. Now, this is really the big win on this slight mod, right? All we did is sand roll that bench from stoning to sand roll. Look at how close this is from top to bottom now across our short side, right? This one was, this side went up because this went down quite a bit when we stoned it. Minus a little bit, minus a lot, right? We got rid of a lot of speed on that side. 357, 365 across, not bad. As far as I'm concerned, this is a winner. I'll take these flows. Okay, guys. Alrighty, I don't know what I'm going to do next on these. Give me some input. I'm a little ahead on my videos, so I got a busy day tomorrow. I don't know how if I'm going to get anything done at all. But in any case, I appreciate you guys hanging out and putting up with this little nitpicking every little bit. Try to get, try to squeeze what we can out of this without making a hole in the casting. Uh, but that's kind of the project, right? It's called Mission Impossible for a reason. <laughs> What's kind of funny is the guys that are like, oh, it needs to have all original parts, like the original cast pistons that'll fit sloppily in the bores because it's worn out. Sorry, guys, we're not doing that. <laughs> as much as you might like to, I don't really care what you wind up doing with something like that. It's it's not gonna It's not going to be an efficient piece, okay? You need straight bores. You need pistons that fit well. You need rings that are gapped the right, correct way for whatever you're running. Naturally aspirated versus power adder and so forth. There's a lot to think about. So the original plan that was completely all stock 318 parts, you're never making a horse per cube. 
So I don't really care, really, what you say. Remember, it was like 120, 125 or 129 horsepower stock. How are you going to squeeze? I more than double it. How are you going to more than double it without doing some serious modifications? I kept I kept tabs on on the hours on these heads. It's just ridiculous how many hours are into them. But I don't mind doing it because one, I learn. Two, I get to show other guys what I learn, and you can learn not to do this. All right, get a nice set of aluminums and clean them up a little bit, and you're probably better off instead of wasting weeks worth of time literally weeks of full-time work doing these. But it kind of proves a point as well, right? It can be done. Guys that have to use these cylinder heads, you can make nice power with them, but it's going to be a monumental effort. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.